Are you going on a Bermuda cruise and wondering what to expect? How different is it from a Caribbean cruise? What are the things that you absolutely need to know? I've got all of it here for you in this video. Hi there, I'm Lana from the website lifeballcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, if you're going on a Bermuda cruise, you might be wondering about what are some of the best things to do in Bermuda on a cruise. Well, I recently did a video all about that and I will link it by the way at the end of this video in case you do wanna check it out. But what I realized was that people had a lot of questions about what Bermuda is like, especially right now if you're cruising to it. And what I also realized when we went there is there were a couple of things that actually really did surprise us, especially right now. And we got caught a little bit off guard. So I will share with you that story in this video. Now, before I get started, I did want to mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Okay, let's get started. So first day, if you're going on a Bermuda cruise, then you're likely leaving from one of the Northeastern ports. So you may be leaving from Cape Liberty, Bayonne, New Jersey, from Manhattan, New York, from Boston, or from Baltimore. So those are the most popular cruise ports for those Bermuda cruises, although there are some others. And most of the time you're going to be spending two or even three days in Bermuda, which does give you some time to explore. And at the same time, I know a lot of people wonder, can I come and go as I please on the cruise ship? And basically, yes, you can. You can pretty much come and go on that cruise ship. Just consider it sort of like your hotel that's docked right in Bermuda at Dockyard. Now, years ago, there really wasn't that much to do and see in Dockyard or Kings Wharf. However, it really has built up over the years and it really has become a destination unto its own. Now, you still want to explore the rest of Bermuda, whether it's the beaches or going to do some of the different activities or going over to Hamilton. However, do save some time to visit in Dockyard where you'll find museums, you'll find a beach and various activities and shopping. Now, the time that I'm filming this video, there are some rules, protocols, travel restrictions in Bermuda that you should know about. Now, if you're watching this later on, just skip over this part if it's not applicable. The rest of the video will still be applicable. So just something to mention is right now, what you do need to do is get a Bermuda travel certificate. So you can go right on the Bermuda website and you will have to upload your information. So basically your proof of vaccine and you have to agree that you will be tested before going to the island. So it will give you all of that information, just make sure to follow it. But basically what you do need to know is you need to do this between 30 days before your cruise and a week before your cruise. This is mandatory. If you don't do this, you probably won't be able to board your cruise and you certainly won't be able to get off in Bermuda. It is right now $40 per person. Now you might be wondering if you have to wear masks in Bermuda and being honest, this kind of tripped me up on the cruise that I did just a little while ago in Bermuda because you do actually have to wear a mask in government buildings. I know you might be thinking, where is the government building that I'm going to be going to? Well, that's actually the cruise terminal building. As you just walk through it, you do need to wear a mask. I didn't have my mask with me and I did get one from the ship security, but it is something to know. Bring some masks with you on your cruise and take them with you when you do go out in Bermuda. You will also need them when you take public transportation so that means when you do take the ferry, for instance, if you take the ferry uh, from Dockyard where the ship is over to Hamilton, you will need to have a mask before you board the ferry. And sometimes people are running and they're a little bit late like us and they'll let you on that ferry, but you have to wear your mask. Now, while we did need to wear masks on the ferry, when we did end up going over to Hamilton uh, for the Hamilton Harbor Nights, which is sort of a street parade, I didn't really see people wearing masks and we were all together. Of course, we were outside, but I didn't see them being worn in stores either, but it is something good to know. Have a mask with you just in case. You might be wondering what currency is used in Bermuda Bermuda. So Bermudians use the Bermudian dollar. However, it is linked one to one with the US dollar and you are able to use your US dollars interchangeably in Bermuda. Now, one of the great things about cruising to Bermuda is it is very safe to walk on your own, to take public transit. And that includes the public buses as well as the ferries that will go over to St. George and go over to Hamilton. Now, what you can do when a lot of cruisers and a lot of tourists do this is that you may wanna purchase a multi-day pass. So if you think you're going to be really exploring the island on your own, then this probably is the best thing for you. If you have excursions booked, then you may wanna simply pay directly as you get on the ferry. It is $5 per person per way, or you may wanna even just purchase a pass for one day. 
Now, something small, but a very important tip is that the Bermuda time is actually one hour different from Eastern time in the United States. So it just is really important when you do go off in Bermuda, make sure that yes, you know the Bermuda time, but as well, make sure that you know if the cruise ship is on the same time as Bermuda, make sure that you do know your ship's time. Now we've all seen and heard that Bermuda has gorgeous pink sand beaches, but you might be wondering, is it really true? So yes and no. Bermuda's beaches do have pink sand. However, it isn't that bright pink sand that maybe people saturate their photos or something like that. It is like a blush champagne pink, almost a peachy kind of color. And I have to say though, there are some days where maybe it's very, very sunny. And there are some times that we have been there um, at Horseshoe Bay Beach, for instance, and the sand really has looked a little bit more pink than at other times. So I'm not really sure exactly why that is, but it definitely does have a blush pink sand and it really is that beautiful. Now you might be wondering if you can rent a car to get around the island. So no, tourists are not able to rent a car in Bermuda. However, what you can do is you can rent a small moped or you can rent a small electric car. These are really small. I'm going to insert a photo for you to see. Um, but people are doing this more and more. I would say be very careful though, in particular with the mopeds. We do hear from the Bermudians. They say there are a lot of accidents and usually it is the tourists that sadly, uh, well, they do end up getting hurt. Of course, they drive on a different side of the road than you may be used to, depending where you come from. And they know the roads and we do not. Now, if you do take the ferry, in particular, if you take the ferry over to Hamilton, in the evening time, you really do want to watch that ferry schedule because at a certain time, there won't be any more ferries that are coming back to the cruise ship. And if you get stuck over in Hamilton, it'll take you some time to come back by taxi. And my understanding is it's a good hundred dollars or so to be able to come back to dockyard by taxi. So watch that. However, something to note is while we were um, in Hamilton for the Hamilton Harbor Nights not too long ago, they actually had additional ferries running for that night, but they did have a sign that let us know. So take a look, watch for that when you do arrive, if you are there on Wednesday evenings for Hamilton Harbor Nights. Now, please let me know if you're going on a Bermuda cruise or if you've gone on a Bermuda cruise before, let me know your tips down in the comments below and let me know any questions that you have as well. Make sure to watch this video next. It's all about the best things to do in Bermuda and I know it is going to be super helpful. If you did enjoy this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I'd love to have you here within the Lifewell Cruise community. Bye for now and happy cruising.